Hello, everybody. Uh, this is George Kuna from Zesto Audio in uh, Southern California. Uh, talking to you today I uh, about the, uh, my latest question. I had a question that came in. How does an MC cartridge work? And how does the loading affect it? Which is a really good question. It's a, it's a really good basic question. And um, I just want, without getting into uh, um, a lot of physics uh, and a lot of technical jargon, I do it, I'm going to try and do this as simply as I can and see if I could uh, get to the gist of it. So first of all, I am going to put on your screen a diagram, a cross section of a, a, a typical moving core cartridge. Now, I'm not going to go over moving magnet and moving iron and so on. That's uh, that's a, a, a subject for a, a different broadcast. This one, I'm going to concentrate on moving coil. Now, on the diagram that I just put up, the slide I put up, on the top, um, there is a magnet. And uh, that dotted section on the top, it's a strong magnet. And on each end is attached what they call a yoke. It's uh, basically steel that's uh, magnetic that with a screw that tightens up, up across the magnet in this, in this particular instant. And what that does is applies a strong magnetic field to what's called the coil, as in the moving coil. And I'll explain. Going from the bottom left to the top, uh, to the right, on the very left, there's a stylus. That stylus, it's the diamond part that actually runs in the groove. And I have a, a diagram I could put up in a few minutes. And what this diamond does, it vibrates in the groove. And maybe I'll just do it, hold on, uh, like this. This is a stylus in a groove. And as it, where it says the needle, that's the stylus. It's running in the groove and it's the the uh, waves from the left and the right channel make it vibrate and as it vibrates in the groove it also vibrates the cantilever which is the uh the what it's attached to it's the straight uh little pole that uh goes into the magnet magnetic field so again from left to right bottom is the stylus it runs in the in the vinyl in the groove on the vinyl it vibrates vibrates the cantilever and vibrates the coil in the magnetic field. Now, here's a basic physics uh, uh, pr a property. That is, if you take a coil of wire and you move it in a magnetic field, it will create electricity. That's how a generator works. All generators use this principle. And this is a generator, essentially. What's going on is, Again, the stylus vibrates in the groove, which is attached to the cantilever, which vibrates with the stylus, which is at, the coil is attached to the cantilever, and it vibrates in the magnetic field. And then there are two wires that come from this that go out of the cartridge, and then goes into your tone arm and into the phono stage and so on. So th this is the moving coil because the coil actually vibrates. And it's a very small signal, as you can imagine. And uh, it has to get amplified a lot. And here's a, a, a more complex diagram, essentially the same thing. But you've got the stylus at the tip on the bottom left-hand corner. You have a cantilever, which is vibrating. And you've got a coil in a magnetic field. This one, though, also shows you the output pins on the right side. There's a red and a green pin. Well, there are four for a stereo cartridge, two for the left and two for the right, because they're actually two separate coils, one for the left and one for the right. If I go back to the diagram of the stylus running in the groove, you notice there are two grooves, there are two walls, one on the left, one on the right it says wave of left channel and wave of right channel and what that does it stimulates each coil to produce the correct uh the correct signal so you get a left and a right signal so essentially uh what's going on is that uh this this whole mechanism runs let me go back to the simple diagram 
So the whole, essentially what happens is that the whole thing just runs in the groove, vibrates and creates electricity. Now, what do we do with this? I mean, you know, you've got electricity, but you've got to, so, you know, I mean, that's good because that electrical signal represents the music that's in the groove, but then you have to uh, put it into a phono stage. And the phono stage does a couple of different things. It amplifies the very small signal so you can use it. It also does corrective uh, equalizing, uh, following in this case RIAA curve, which I am going to go over in a different a different time. But for this particular broadcast, I just want to say that that's essentially what the phono stage does. But it also what it does is it provides a load. Again, let's go back. To to the image of, uh, if you would, I don't have an image that I could show you, of a generator. You get a power generator. If you had no load on it, and if it had no governor, no mechanism to prevent it from over revving, and you had no load on there at all, it would blow up. It would just spin out of control and self-destruct. So in what you're looking for is a way of loading it in a, in a proper way. Usually with a generator, it also they have things like it's designed for so many amps and so much. In other words, you could only put so many appliances on this generator before you bog it down. And if it bogs down, then it can't produce the power. You're, and it, it's the same for a cartridge, an MC cartridge. Loading it is incredibly essential because it what it does is allows it to work in the best way it can. Now, so how do you know if you've got the right loading? Um, I've been asked that a few times, and I, can, I usually can demonstrate it. Of course, it's kind of difficult here. But um, essentially, what's going on is if you've got the loading uh, too high and uh, let me let me take a step back on this because this is this is uh, an, uh, something I think should be clarified. The lower the number, the more of a load. The higher the number, the less of a load. Like for instance, on our phono stage, we just have a new one that deluxe. Uh, when when that load is at 50 ohms, you're asking more current to be drawn from the cartridge which creates a bigger load, which at, gives makes the, uh, that cantilever have a, a greater resistance. It, it's harder for it to move, very slightly, but it makes it harder for it to move. Um, and then if you've got it on a 1,000 ohms, it's easy for it to move. It doesn't have to produce as much current. So if you have it on 50 ohms, that would, what that would sound like is, the very loudest passages would not be as loud. And if you had it on a thousand, then the difference between the loud passage and the quieter passage would be greater. In other words, the dynamic range, or you could say what it does is applies a certain amount of compression. It's kind of like a shock absorber in a car. If you had a, if you had a, uh, a shock absorber that was not really uh, working properly, then that tire just bounces all over the place as you go over all the bumps. And if it was too stiff, like for instance in a race car, the, the, they tend to be much stiffer because they're not anticipating any huge bumps. And if you went over a bump, it would do the same thing. It would be jarring. Again, let's go back to that uh, image of that stylus. Um, you could, I mean, that's pretty rough. I, that's, that's pretty rough territory there. That's really going through it quite fast. Um, and it has to track. In other words, the stylus, or the needle in this case, has to stay in that groove as much as possible in order for it to properly transfer the signal coming out. So it's very important for it to track properly. And the way you have a track, just like a car, just like a shock absorber, having it set to the right amount and what that is it's different for every cartridge and it is also different based on your system the kind of music you listen to and what your personal preferences are it's just a matter of adjusting it uh in a way that 
makes sense. Now, the thing about off on a stage is that's a little that I just 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 we just released this uh, by the way this is our latest uh andros deluxe phono stage uh, let me just show you the back okay so the thing is that i like that and this is why i designed it this way so i wanted to be able to hear the difference when i adjusted the loading and i also wanted to design this in such a way that all the music could come in from the cartridge and it doesn't get shunted around the, the it just I just wanted as much information I I look at whatever comes in, out of the cartridge as being pristine uh, it's it's doing all this uh, all this tracking uh, with with this with the cartridge and it's trying to really uh, follow the follow the uh, the groove and produce the best possible uh, current out of it and then to properly engage and to properly uh, uh, take advantage of that without diluting it or creating any other problems. I felt it was really important to load on the secondary of the step-up transformer. And what that does is without getting through this whole uh, whole other uh, section about step-up transformers, actually I think I talked about them on another broadcast. But essentially what you're, what's going on is I'm applying damping to, the, uh, to, to that cartridge, to that cantilever, using the secondary and what that does is it allows all the signal to come in but you're still able to control the uh dynamic damping of the of the cantilever in a way that will allow it to track now what i also wanted to do which i thought was just really super important was that i really wanted to be able to make changes on the fly so i can hear them i mean you know i don't want to be in a situation where i'm just uh um you know Oh, stop, you know, turning the unit off, changing settings, putting the box back together and listening to it and trying to figure out whether or not it sounded better or not. I don't know about you, but for me, it's really, it was very difficult. So all our final stages, uh, whether the controllers are on the front or the back, you can adjust the loading on the fly. I mean, you could adjust it and be able to instantly hear what's going on. And uh, to me, that was really, really super important. And uh, and so yeah, so that's that's uh, uh, how that all works. And this phono stage has enough gain to be able to take that small signal and make it into uh, into a signal that you could really use. So uh, any uh, so I am they do I went over a little bit, but uh, hopefully that gives you a, a little bit of an insight. If you have any questions about uh, the, about the MC cartridge or any. Uh, audio related questions, uh, please post them to me on Facebook and I would uh, really um, uh, I, I would really uh, uh, appreciate it and I'd be glad to uh, to respond on uh, online and uh, be able to give you some answers hopefully that will make it easier for you to understand. So uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, please like us on Facebook if you haven't already. Uh, follow us, follow Zesto. And uh, if you don't get our emails or you would like to, please uh, opt in and we'll be glad to send you some email. We don't send a lot, only a, a couple of months, one or two a month. So uh, thank you again and I'll see you next time.